Well, I know the Lord's working this morning because every one of those songs, just hear the message in them and be able to just to sing and praise the Lord for those uh, messages. I just wanted to begin not uh, with the message, but uh, 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 anyway, uh, you, you've heard of, and that's just recently to share as reading. I don't even know how I came across it because I don't Facebook and all those things. But uh, uh, anyway, looking up illustrations, but uh, the... Uh, 24 year old I, I don't know if I got her name right uh, to to John uh, Schoenmaker and uh, show show and maker uh, anyway she's a South African swimmer and uh, she she just set the world record uh, in the 200 meter breaststroke what stand out stood out to me though is she's got on her her cap that she wears underneath her South African cap and just kind of media and such has made a big deal out of it but uh, it says soli deo gloria and uh, glory to God alone. That's what it says. And she professes to be a Christian, talks about the Lord, and but she set the uh, record. And and uh, I uh, I'm patriotic. I love when the United States wins. Uh, I'm love. I love when uh, when uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, gymnasts and and uh, you know just brought home the gold for the United States. And that's always a uh, you know exciting. There's the United States again and, and representing. Uh, you know uh, uh, our country and and of course I, I like America to win don't you like to be on the winning side uh, but don't be a poor loser but be on the winning side uh, but I don't know just as a Christian it just excited to me I, I'm glad that South African uh, woman that she won and uh, and uh, it, it's okay to me that the United States lost actually didn't lose but uh, anyway didn't come in last but uh, anyway just uh, uh, just uh, I praise the Lord why because she's a I'm a citizen of heaven before I'm ever a citizen of the United States of America and to me it's just exciting when a Christian no matter what nation they're in that, uh, is going to honor God uh, in such a way and of course there's been a lot of a lot of talk about just that uh, I mean it's just amazing how you can put glory to God alone on your cap and it gets so much attention so many, I guess there's been a lot of news about it a lot of people referring to it and and of course uh, many uh, excited about it and then many not uh, i think it detracts from the, the olympics and whatever and and uh, but uh anyway i just uh I just thank the lord for uh for uh, uh just reminding me i'm a citizen of heaven first amen and uh, it's okay to get excited even when a south african wins and uh, just uh, praise the lord uh for uh again her testimony that she would uh, just be outspoken uh, about the lord i don't know what church she goes to what her uh, faith and such is but uh, obviously she has no uh, shame about uh, professing the Lord and then it's also got the Christian symbol of the fish uh, there on it uh, and uh, uh, with the uh, uh, the uh, acronym that recognizes Jesus Christ as the Savior alone so uh, so again as we uh, just uh, just praise the Lord that uh, again that uh, that I'm a, a citizen of heaven and uh, uh, that uh, again this one day we're going to get to go home. This world's not our home. We'll be there. So, uh, but this morning we're in Jude, if you would, Jude eight, uh, Jude eight, and uh, just continuing through the book of uh, of Jude. The title of the message this morning: These filthy dreamers, these filthy dreamers. Uh, Jude eight, uh, right before Revelations, uh, one chapter long. Book of Jude, and probably over when we're done with this series, you'll be able to know where the Book of Jude is. So you can say Jude, and you'll uh, I know right where that is. You say I already knew that. Well, praise the Lord. And uh, Jude, verse number eight, the Bible says uh, here: Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignity. Uh, we know it's God's word given by inspiration of God. God calls them filthy dreamers, uh, filthy dreamers. So we're going to look at uh, these filthy dreamers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, just want to thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can uh, just come and acknowledge you as our Savior and our King and, and just praise you that uh, we are citizens of heaven first. And, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to being in heaven. I, I, do, I am thankful that you uh, just uh, allowed me to... Uh, to be born into the United States of America. And this is the country and the place you've given for me to be light and salt and, and uh, to uh, be a blessing. And, and uh, Father, just thank you that you've given me this place to serve and, and people to uh, just love and reach with the gospel. And, 
And uh, Lord, just uh, just thank you for all that's good about America. And and uh, Father, I uh, just want to pray that you would uh, bless the message this morning. And and uh, Lord, again, just continue a work in our lives. Uh, Lord, if there's one person here not saved, I, I pray that they'd uh, just make that uh, eternal choice uh, to uh, be saved. Uh, it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Uh, it's pretty clear in the book of Jude that uh, Jude is, is uh, you know, excited about grace. And, and of course, that common salvation that, uh, you know, God's riches at Christ's expense being saved uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone. Jesus Christ is the only uh, savior. And and a lot of the messages, the series was on choices at teen camp and and uh, just uh, talking about different choices uh, there in the uh, I think it was the first message anyway. Uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, there. Uh, Brother uh, McKenzie was uh, was just uh, sharing uh, that uh, uh, he uh, uh, choices. There's you know, there's temporary choices. And he, of course, he uh, he has a way with with the kids. And he's just talking about, you know, theatrics, about brushing his teeth and different things and and uh, of course there's there's simple choices we make every day and uh, you know they're temporary choices and uh and of course as you make them and then there's uh there's uh you know longer choices and and then there's lifelong choices you know there's longer choices what are you going to do with your career what do you uh, you know direction you go through life but there's lifelong choices like marriage and and you know those things that we make but then there's an eternal choice uh you know and, and that's whether you're going to be saved or not uh that's the most important choice and uh, and to make a choice to be saved and and if you don't uh you know go to heaven it's not because god uh, didn't let you uh and uh, or didn't make it it's your choice uh, god gave us the ability to choose. you can choose whether to be saved or not and and if you uh, choose not to choose you've chosen and uh and so you gotta think about that choose not to choose you've chosen if you choose not to to be saved well you've chosen to be lost and uh, you, you've made a choice you'll be in hell for all eternity uh, because of your choice and uh, there's there's accountability in choices and so i uh, just making a choice if you're not saved i encourage you make a choice to be saved today and and uh, you know grace is that uh, that god's uh, willing to be our savior and forgive us of all of our sins past present and future uh, you know I, I praise the lord i'll never stand before god and answer for my sins uh, some of those sins i haven't even committed yet uh, and I don't know if I'll live to be 90 or 100 or uh, 127 or how old I'll, uh, I'll uh, uh, you know, be. Uh, you know, I, I may live to be 56. Uh, we'll see. And because uh, my birthday's this month, I'll be 56. And so we'll just see if I live that long or not. But uh, but uh, to, uh, uh, you know, be able to, we really don't know uh, how long our life's but a vapor that appeareth for a moment and passeth away. And and uh, just uh, how long we're going to get to live and serve the Lord. And and uh, but. Uh, again, as we uh, think of grace, I, I praise the Lord. If I live to make it to be 56, uh, I guess I'll just have to start saying that I'll live to be 56. Then, uh, you know, I, I don't know yet what sins I'll commit, uh, but I do know they're all forgiven. Uh, they're all under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when he became my savior, he, he promised to save me from all my sins. Uh, and when he went to that cross, he already knows what I'm going to commit tomorrow. Uh, and uh, some would take that as a license to sin. Uh, well, if he's he's died for all the sins, then, you know, I'm just going to go out and live it up, fill up my life uh, with sin. And and, uh, you know, I, I'd be concerned that's evidence. Maybe you aren't saved uh, if that's uh, your attitude towards sin. But uh, but there are, you know, I, I'm just going to go out and do that because Jesus Christ died for it anyway. He paid for it. And and, uh, you know, that goes to his account. And and I remember uh, talking to a young man. He got a a, a a charge card from his dad when he graduated high school. Now, this is something that, uh, you know, I bet Brother Rod never did. But, uh, you know, he just wanted his son to sow his wild oats, wanted to live it up. So he gave him a credit card. And his dad said, I'll, I'll keep the bill paid. You just go out and you live it up for the next two years. You can go anywhere we want. Travel. He's traveled different countries, different places, stayed in fancy hotels. I mean, you know, uh, his dad saved, he said, all of his life to be able to have that. that his son could go out and just enjoy those two years. And uh, I was just thinking about that. It's like, boy, that wasn't my dad. Uh, wouldn't you like to choose who your dad is uh, you know just uh you know, uh, dad give you a charge card and go out and live it up and and uh, uh but i would like to think that uh you know if i'm going to go out and live it up and dad's giving me a charge card to be able to do it that doesn't mean i'm going to go out and do it uh dad's back there working hard to pay the bill and uh, you know if it, i mean if you love your dad why would you go out and and uh, uh live it up like that and say well i could stay in this uh cheaper hotel is expensive hey dad's paying for it i'm going to 
Uh, you know, some people, they, uh, you know, uh, be, being saved, they say, hey, Jesus Christ, he, you know, he had to die for every single one of those sins. He took those upon him as God, uh, you know, his God, his, his father uh, turned his back on his son. Uh, why would he do that? Because he took all of our sin on him and God can't look upon sin. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he cried out from the cross uh, because God had to turn away from his son because he became not became. Uh, yeah, he became guilty of our sin. Uh, he, he took all the horrible things that we've done upon him and and bore the uh, the, the shame of that. And uh, he became that serpent uh, that was lifted up. And and, uh, you know, he, he, he became sin for us who knew no sin. But we might re, be made the righteousness of God in him. And and so as we uh, as we think of what Christ has done for us and and he's given us a salvation. And and, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you can use the term, I'd like to use the term this morning, liberty. Uh, liberty just kind of picture given that that uh, charge card and and uh, you know and say wow you can just go out and you can live it up that's what kids think we got with charge card anyway uh, you know dad you got a credit card you know uh, well we can't get that you know I just uh, you don't have the money for it you got a credit card it used to be you got checks in your checkbook still I saw them and I just write some of those checks out and and uh, you know just uh, you know sometimes our government thinks that right just print some more money uh, just hand it out here, hand it out there. And uh, well, we understand there's a stewardship responsibility. But, uh, you know, as as uh, God has, has saved us and praise the Lord to be saved. Uh, the Bible just says here that there's there's these false teachers that have come in and they've uh, they've been just uh, teaching and whether through their lifestyle uh, as leaders in the church or uh, whether through the messages, uh, you know, that they're preaching. But the Bible says they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Uh, you're saved so you can live however you want. Uh, go out and live it up. There was actually a a uh, teaching in Paul's day. Paul refers to it, and and uh, but uh, they, they they just believed this this uh, this flesh isn't going to go to heaven. So it doesn't matter what you do to it; it's what you do to your spirit. So be careful, take care of your spirit. But, but you know whatever you do with your flesh is okay. And they lived that way. And uh, uh, you know, of course, in the Roman culture, they were allowed to live that way. It's what kind of dis it destroyed the uh, Rome destroyed from inside because of the debauchery. Uh, and, and such within uh, in Rome. But uh, but uh, again, to uh, to uh, look at, uh, you know, this uh, this passage and, and of course in Jude taking place. Notice in verse number eight. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers who are these filthy dreamers that he's talking about. Well, uh, refer back to verse number four. Uh, verse number four. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ordained by who? The, the devil. Uh, it, it's a plan. But uh, ordained, uh, you know, this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's the topic he's dealing with, the teaching. He says he wanted to preach on the common salvation, but, uh, you know, because of, uh, you know, them, uh, them uh, you know, uh, not contending for the faith, uh, here he, uh, you know, and particularly the, the doctrine or teaching he's referring to as he goes through this passage, what they've taken the grace of God and turned it into lasciviousness. Again, a long word. We took some time to uh, expound on it just briefly, uh, fleshly or uh, loose, uh, lustful, uh, lazy living, uh, loose, lustful, lazy living. If it feels good, do it. Uh, if it feels good, do it uh, like Rod and Ruth's neighbors. And uh, they had a big party last night until one o'clock in the morning and they got so drunk and and, uh, uh, you know, I'm still surprised people didn't call the police. But uh, but uh, anyway, just uh, uh, carousing and whatever. And and what is it loose, the lustful, uh, lazy living? And, and they just, uh, uh, you know, uh, they had liberty last night. They were just going to do whatever they wanted to do. And I wonder how they feel this morning. How do you think they feel this morning? Uh, I wonder if they, they got some, you know, we, now we got that YouTube. I wonder if they got any of those YouTube videos. You go look and, and, you know, their friends post all those things on YouTube videos that they said and they did. And, and uh, uh, you know, because some of them were grown ups, mature people that, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, it's amazing what alcohol do to you. And uh, the very first uh, drink you take, uh, you know, it affects the part of your brain. They've done it on by side. Uh, what, what that part that that self control. Uh, that self the very first drink it, it doesn't you don't have to be legally drunk to uh, you know uh, but uh, you know just the very first it goes to that that part and, and so you'll do things you normally wouldn't do that's why people like it it gives them an excuse why would you say that or do that or act like that well I was drunk 
as if that's an excuse, right? You make a choice. But, uh, but uh, again, uh, you know, uh, they, they were turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. And uh, that a Christian would ever act like that. You think a Christian's ever act like that? I know many have. And uh, uh, you're looking at one of them. Uh, saved and not living for the Lord. And, uh, and uh, uh, not proud of it. Uh, my drinking was all before I turned 21. And uh, I... Uh, I was 20 years old when I gave my life to the Lord and I turned from that stuff. But, uh, you know, it was before it was ever you know, legal. And I'm thankful for it. And uh, what was it? Sarai, I think, when she turned 21. I just praised the Lord. She said, all of her friends are saying, you need to go to the bar and get a drink. Uh, why? You're 21. And uh, she says, that, that's all my friends tell me. She says, the last thing I want to do. I praise the Lord. Uh, you know, you turn 21, what do you get? Freedom, liberty, right? Now I can legally do it, says the law. Uh, I've been set free. Kids grow up in the home, and when they get to that point where they get out of the home, they, uh, I have liberty. I've been set free. I can go out and do whatever I want. Pay bills, work a job, uh, pay for the mechanic to fix the car, or, you know, uh, fix the car that, uh, it isn't always wonderful you call up dad and hey my brakes are wearing out we'll fix them uh you know that's my dad uh you know we'll fix them you're growing up right and uh, uh you're you're growing up he showed me when i was a kid how to do that so uh you know that uh, that kind of helped but he would do it with me it's always kind of nice to have dad doing it with you and uh but uh, now uh you know what uh, well give me that charge card uh and i'll go out and fix them but uh no got to use your own charge card now but uh, isn't that liberty wonderful uh you get to grow up and get to do whatever you want and uh, uh, liberty notice here the bible says in verse eight likewise also these filthy dreamers we know the ones he's talking about these uh ones who've turned the grace of god into lasciviousness uh, filthy dreamers. why is called them filthy dreamers well uh, the, the term dreamer in scripture it's it's dealing with prophets uh, teachers uh, the first place that it's used in the bible is in genesis 37 19 it's used of joseph uh, his brothers call him a dreamer that dreamer why because he has a vision doesn't he and uh, there in in uh, genesis he's got this uh, this vision of course of his 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 uh, 11 brothers and his mom and dad bowing down to him of course he doesn't understand the dream he just shares it. it's pretty exciting god has given me a dream and he shares it with them, and of course they, uh, oh, you think we're going to worship you? And and uh, you know even even Dad gets a little bit upset when he first hears it. And and uh, but how does it play out? Well, Joseph becomes the savior, doesn't he? Joseph goes down to Israel, gets lifted up to be second to Pharaoh, and all of Israel, including, including his dad, comes down to Israel, and he's able to, uh, you know, he he's now the hierarchy he's now the uh, you know uh, the the, the uh, uh, second in all of the land and and he's got control of all the food and such in a time of famine and and uh, just how uh, you know he's uh, he's able to save all of his brothers and and their kids and grandkids and and his dad and and uh, just the whole family of Israel is able to save gives them the best of the land of Goshen and and uh, but they call him a dreamer oh that dreamer uh, well, that's, that was another term for the prophets, dreamers, uh, dreamers. God would speak through uh, dreams uh, in the Old Testament. It doesn't mean every dream was of God. The, the Bible says if there's ever a, 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 a dream or a prophet uh, that shares a prophecy that doesn't come true, they're supposed to be stoned. They're a false prophet. I'd be careful sharing my dreams, wouldn't you? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, those those today that say, oh, I'm a prophet. Uh, there's no more prophets today. Uh, you know, the Bible says the church was built upon the, uh, the, the, the foundation of the apostles and prophets. They, uh, they fulfilled their ministry. We have the word of God today. Amen. It's completed. God's not going to give you any new, new prophecy. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, he'll speak to you through what he's already given you. We already have all the way to the end, don't we? 
and into eternity. Praise the Lord for, uh, you know, the new heaven and new earth. And, and, and so God's completed it. And in fact, he tells us since he ends revelations, he's completed it. But, uh, you know, there's those today that say, oh, I'm a uh, I'm a prophet. And, you know, the dangerous thing, you know, the uh, the uh, the uh, dreamer that would not tell the truth, a dreamer that would say, thus saith the Lord, and it does not come to pass. What was he supposed to be doing? He's supposed to be taken out and they take big, big rocks and throw at him until he died. Supposed to be stoned. Uh, you know, and and, uh, uh, and that'll that, that'll take care of those who would uh, just be pretend prophets and false teachers. And and that's, uh, you know, as we refer to here, filthy dreamers. Uh, filthy used out without the word. I like, uh, you know, one uh, one uh, synonym uh, word for for filthy is stinking. That's in, in Hebrew. Uh, they, they they would uh, they would say stinking, but uh, it says uh, uh, just a, a few verses. Deuteronomy or uh, uh, Psalms fourteen three says they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. They speaking of you and I. She looks out on this earth has all become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no not one. Psalm fifty three three says every one that is of them has gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no not one. That's us in our natural state. Well, we're saved, we're filthy. Uh, in uh, God's sight, we stink. Proverbs 30, 12, there's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, yet is not washed from their filthiness. Uh, speaking of those that are lost, and, and that's the, the problem with these filthy dreamers is they're, they're, they're not saved. They got religion, uh, but they're not saved. And, and, uh, but uh, filthy dreamers, I'm just thinking of your dreams. Uh, what do you dream about? Uh, and uh, uh, what is it that you have dreams about? Filthy dreams. We could think of all kinds of you know things that could come to mind with filthy dreams. What is he talking about? These filthy dreamers. He's not talking about what we're thinking about. Uh, these filthy dreamers. They uh, they think like the world thinks. I could see a lost man who God says, here, here's my credit card. Do whatever you want. I, I can picture, you know, lost people acting like Rod and Ruth's neighbors last night. Uh, I could ask, you know, I, I could picture that. Throw off all the restraints and do whatever you want. And uh, that's, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you have liberty. And that's where these filthy dreamers are. Uh, they've got uh, you know, the understanding of grace, whether they're saved or not, he calls them filthy dreamers. So, uh, you know, uh, either either lost or carnal. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, God says you now have liberty. You've now got grace. What are you going to do with it? Uh, well, what will the filthy dreamers do? I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, some of the things. One of the reasons I call my wife this morning, poor wife, she she was up all night and I woke her up early this morning. Such a mean husband. But uh, but uh, uh, anyway, I, I was just asking my memory just goes quick. And I was just asking, what are what are some of those things that our kids did when mom and dad were gone? Uh, what? Uh, did they do that? Oh, no, kids. What, what do our kids do? Uh, what do our kids do when uh, when uh, uh, and, and I was just trying to think, you know, you know, one of the biggest things my kids just got uh, so happy about telling us about after after they grew up and they weren't going to get in trouble anymore. Uh, you know, there was a time that as they got older, we would go and clean banks at night and, and uh, not clean them out of the money, but uh, the dirt. Uh, but uh, anyway, and and uh, they uh, and so, uh, you know, they were old enough to be at home. We'd make sure they were in bed and they were asleep. We'd check on them to be asleep before we'd leave because we didn't want any problems when we were gone, even though, you know, kids will be kids and mom and dad are gone. So uh, even though uh, uh, Sarai and, and, uh, and Seth were old enough to watch the kids. But uh, anyway, they just share as soon as that door would close. They were all up out of those beds. They were pretending. They said almost every night. And uh, uh, and uh, they, they, they'd get up and they'd, they'd do all kinds of things to keep themselves awake. Why? Because they were supposed to be asleep. And uh, uh, mom and dad aren't here. We can do what we want. And so what did they do? What would you do if mom and dad weren't home? I can think of some things. I, I, I'm so glad I had the kids I had. Because I can think of some things I did when mom and dad weren't home. And, and, uh, and I'm just glad that, uh, you know, my kids didn't. But, uh, but uh, what would what, what they, what, what they think about? You know, what can we get away with? Hey, we can stay up late when we're not supposed to. And so they'd play games and they'd beat each other and they'd 
you know, uh, uh, beat, beat, you know, anyway, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, in fact, uh, Seth, my oldest, I guess he was merciless with his, you know, but they didn't tell us any of this and they didn't tell him when he got home because he threatened to kill him if they did. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, just uh, to think of, you know, things that they did to, uh, you know, I just, I, I was just thinking, boy, I'm glad I had the kids that I, uh, you know, I had. Uh, another thing was uh, we, we didn't allow him to have any of those, uh, those uh, monster drinks or anything like that because I just, you know, I believe it's bad for your heart. And kids got too much energy anyway. They don't need more energy. Old guys like me may, may need some more energy, but uh, uh, again, it's still bad for my heart, so I'm not going to drink them. And you drink monster rings, that's up to you. But, uh, but uh, you know, the uh, just I uh, had had a rule with my kids, and and uh, uh, and so I just remember that uh, Seth, he he, he was, was some friends had some money. He went and he got a monster drink and he drank it, bragged to his brothers and sisters about it. He drank a monster drink. And uh, they couldn't wait to tell mom and dad, though. But uh, but uh, anyway, to uh, to think of the the uh, things that they, uh, you know, and so I, I just thank the Lord that, you know, my kids, they, uh, you know, uh, growing up, they had some morals and things. And and, uh, and so when they tried to get away with something, that's the kind of things they got away with. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hear about policemen in this. I can't imagine that. And we were in school and the, and the, uh, the uh, things that I mean, we, we thought it was a big deal when you took a piece of paper and you threw it at a, a girl you liked when. Uh, when the teacher wasn't looking, hit her in the head with it. And, uh, of course, she'd squeal and get in trouble for it because she spoke out of turn, and, and uh, you just mm, sit there. And, and uh, you know, it wasn't me, but, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, now they got guns and knives, and, and uh, I don't know what else you know, that goes on. But, uh, but to, to, to think of, uh, you know, these, these, these filthy dreams, what, what would you do if you had liberty? Uh, if you had liberty? Well, let's tell you today you do. As a child of God, you have liberty. God has saved you from your sins. All your sins are forgiven. Even David is in heaven. And uh, I don't know if you could go any further than what David did in his sin. Uh, and, and yet he repented, and, and, and the Bible says the Lord, uh, he, he died with a testimony, if you would, God's epithet on his grave, a man after God's own heart. Uh, ready to do all uh, of God's will and uh, as it says in Acts and and uh, but uh, again just uh, the, the the testimony Paul says he, he chose Paul what uh, chiefest of sinners uh, why T- as an example of the grace of God uh, salvation is for all uh, you have liberty Thomas Huxley said long time ago but Thomas Huxley said a man's worst difficulties begin when he is able to do as he likes. A man's worst difficulties begin when he's able to do as he likes. Uh, we have a trouble. We have trouble with liberty, don't we? Uh, you can do whatever you want. So what do you want to do? Uh, filthy dreamers. What would they do if they uh, had liberty? Uh, what should we do with our liberty that we have? Notice here the Bible says this, what they do with their liberty. It says, likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They defile the flesh. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. As Christians, we've been given liberty. You know, the law is a bondage. Uh, the law is a, a bondage and uh, we, were, we were bound and condemned for hell because of the law. Uh, not because of the law, because of our sin, uh, but the law held over our head. Uh, we had broken God's law, and, and so the law, uh, it is a bondage. Paul says and, and reiterates that it's not that the law is evil or bad. It's that I'm evil and bad. Uh, that the law uh, is a bondage. And uh, first Corinthians chapter number six, beginning in verse number nine, the Bible says, and we, we read this uh, several weeks ago, but it says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drinkards, nor, rev- nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Look around you. Everybody needs to be saved. Uh, you see pe- people involved, in the, and they can be good people most of the time, uh, involved in sin, 
and uh, just again they, they they need to be saved we as christians i'd have a burden for them desire that they be saved they're not going to inherit the kingdom of god verse 11 and such were some of you i hope as a child of god you can say that and such were not and such are but and such were and such were some of you but you are washed but you are sanctified but you are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god what's god saying christians don't act like that anymore uh, christians don't act that, that that's that's past so we were we're not supposed to be that today uh, god has cleaned us up and he's taught us better verse 12 notice here all things are lawful unto me what's paul saying i have grace i have grace jesus christ now has taken the law and nailed it to the cross all things are lawful unto me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but i will not be brought under the power of of any and you know all that sin and such it controls your life it takes over there's consequences and decisions we make and wouldn't that be something if they just took down all the speed signs uh, and uh, i was driving through the school zone over here the other day and and uh, you know school's out and the line's not blinking and the car in front of me they they were driving you know what is it 25 and uh, just puttering along i said don't they know this is 35 schools out that light's not blinking, but uh, you know they uh, they didn't realize that, and, and uh, they uh, you know some people don't have kids or, or around kids or you know don't think about it. they just see twenty five, and that must be twenty five all the time or whatever, and so they're driving twenty five, and and I'm in a hurry, but uh, you know uh, uh, they're uh, you know but what if we removed all the speed signs? Wouldn't that be a blessing? You have liberty, wouldn't you? We'd finally be free. You can ride, drive 100 miles an hour on your way over to Coos Bay instead of that 55 and 50. It slows down to 50, doesn't it? All the time. Just remove those and, and we get to have uh, liberty. And, and uh, wouldn't you love to see some of these teenage drivers with liberty riding 100 miles an hour next to you down that highway? You're saying, I got liberty. I can drive 100. Uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, well, I just don't want everybody else to drive 100. Let me drive 100, but nobody else. And, and, uh, but have liberty. What would you do with liberty if you were given it? Well, as Christians, we were given liberty. What are you going to do with it? The Bible just says all things are not expedient. Paul says, you know, that's part of maturity. You learn, you know, it's, uh, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. And uh, uh, just because I can stay up as late as I want doesn't mean I should stay up as late as I want. Because got responsibilities the next day uh, stayed up later than i should have last night but uh anyway should have been in bed at like six o'clock yesterday afternoon or something that's uh, what it felt like but uh, responsibilities but uh, anyway uh, you know uh, looking at uh, you know here it's not experience notice if you would verse number 19 as he comes down to the end and he deals with these sins primarily the the, the sexual sins of fornication and and uh uh, big problem in Corinth and, and a part of their worship even, but uh, also a, a problem even in the believers. And, and the Bible says in verse number 19, what? Question, what? You know, it's kind of a sarcastic question. God doesn't get sarcastic. But anyway, it's a, it's a question. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God? You're not your own. For you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Again, understanding in their days there were those that would say, uh, your body isn't going to go to heaven, although it is in a glorified form, isn't it? Amen. But, uh, uh, and so it doesn't matter what you do with your body, just, just uh, you know, your spirit. And, and uh, Jesus says, clean up the inside of the cup, the outside will become clean. But uh, here, verse, uh, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Uh, don't you want to glorify him? God says it does matter uh, how you use your liberty. Uh, we're the, the temple of the Holy Ghost. We ought to take care of it, this temple. Uh, we ought to take care of this temple. We ought to have a good testimony. 
We should be concerned what people think. How people look at us. Uh, the response to our actions and our words. and uh, Why? It reflects on Him. Him who loved us and died for us. Who lives for us. Uh, we all talk about how excited we are one day to get to see Jesus. I wonder how excited we will be to see Him. Uh, we'll probably be hiding in the back. Uh, Lord, get to me last. Uh, you say, no, I'm going to run out and meet him. Uh, well, it depends on how you're living when he comes, isn't it? Some people say, you know, when he, he comes, what, what, what's this standing up stuff? He says, rapture practice. You know, going to do some rapture practice. And uh, why? Because the Lord comes, I'm going to jump up to meet him. when He comes to snatch me. I want, want to be with him. Well, uh, you know, I think there's probably going to be a lot of us that are going to, you know, uh, uh, why? Because we're in trouble. Uh, we aren't what we're supposed to be. We haven't done what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, Paul said, I'm ready. Uh, I'd love to be able to say that. Uh, I believe Paul meant it. It's in the Bible. He says, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've finished my course. I haven't finished mine yet. But the Lord is going to come whether I finished or not. When that time comes. Don't you want to be a good presentation of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, have a good testimony. Be a blessing. Look at John chapter 17. John chapter number 17. Shared before, this is the Lord's Prayer. Uh, that other that people memorize and say, that's not the Lord's Prayer. They the uh, the uh, disciples said, teach us how to pray. So he gave them a model. These are some things you can make sure in your prayer. And it's it'd be a blessing if you go through and study that and yeah, and, uh, and then truly pray, uh, not just from from uh, memorizing the words, but uh, truly pray uh, and include those things of your life in in, in that prayer. Uh, but uh, this is the only fully recorded prayer of the Lord. Uh, a lot of times we read of the Lord going and praying, but here we have. Uh, you know, it's a word for word presentation prepared as, as Jesus goes to his father uh, in prayer. And uh, verse one of chapter 17, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father. The hour has come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And he knows it's getting close. Uh, he's about ready to go to the cross and and he's meeting with his disciples and they're going to cross the uh, the uh, brook there and they're going to go up to. Uh, pray in the garden and then the, the soldiers are going to come and he's going to go to Calvary and and uh, he just uh, he says it, it's about finished uh, it's about finished and so he begins to pray and who does he pray for believers uh, those that have gotten saved and those that are going to get saved uh, Lord Jesus Christ is praying he says I, I pray not for the world uh, doesn't mean I've heard some say, see, Jesus doesn't want to save the world. He doesn't pray for the world. That's not what it's this. This prayer, he, he just tells the father, this is who I'm praying for at this time. In this prayer, I'm not praying for the world in this prayer. This this prayer is you, you ever you ever pray for your church family? Uh, you know, as a world, they need to be saved. You ever pray for 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 lost souls? Of course. Uh, but there's times you, you pray for your family. You pray for uh, in, in this this case, he, he's praying for his family. He's praying for those that. Uh, you know, that uh, uh, have believed and those that uh, are going to believe and in, in, in prayer and he includes us in that. And uh, but notice verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Uh, those filthy dreamers, they say, hey, we got liberty. We can go do what we want. You know, Jesus is desiring that his father would keep him from evil. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. It doesn't become a Christian to live like the world. Uh, we're called to live in it, but we're supposed to be different. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You know, I was just thinking and, and uh, I wrote down John eight thirty two. It says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Some Christians that want to hear the preaching of God's word. Why ignorance is bliss. Uh, if I know to do right and I do it not, it's sin. So I just don't want to hear it. Uh, I'm having fun living the way that I'm living. I don't want anybody to come along and tell me I shouldn't be living that way. 
especially God, that convicts us, doesn't it? How can you sleep with yourself if you've heard the truth? The, the truth will make you free. You get li true liberty through the truth. And uh, here he, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. <coughs> and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. In other words, he set the example. <coughs> Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. And that's you and me. That they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. How do you know that salvation is true? How do you know that God is real? Well, just look at that believer there. See what God's done in his life. Uh, and the devil saying, no, look at this believer over here. He's just like the world and he hasn't changed a bit. In fact, he just stabbed you in the back and he just stole from you and he just uh, on and on and listen to his language and listen to what he says and listen to what he does. And and, uh, uh, you know, the devil says that there there's your believer is is you really think that salvation stuff's true. The Bible says. What verse 22 and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. How God must love us as he works in us he's to present us to the world. Look at Galatians chapter 1. I will finish. I had some other passages here, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll finish here. Galatians chapter number 5. Galatians 5. Read through the book of Galatians. What is Galatians emphasis? Grace. They're trying to add works to grace and they're trying to say, yes, you need to trust Christ, but you also got to keep the law. He says, don't put yourself back under that bondage. Uh, I saved you and set you free. You don't have to be concerned anymore about where you're going to spend eternity. Uh, you can say today that, you know, if you live to be 10,000 years old, none of us are going to get there, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we will in heaven, but. Uh, you know, if you, no matter how long you live, you you can know today that you're going to be in heaven. When that day that Jesus comes or that day that you die, you can know. Uh, you don't know much about the time in between what's going to happen in life, what you're going to do, where you're going to be when he comes. But uh, you can know that where he is there, you're going to be. Because you've trusted Christ, you've received the gift of salvation. He has set you free. You now have power over your sins. Why? He's putting the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, I just can't seem to do that, and I can't give that up. Those can'ts aren't words for Christians anymore. Those are excuses. Uh, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. But we like those excuses, don't we? As a child growing up, didn't you like to... Be able to say, well, I'm just a kid, right? Uh, I'm just a kid. And uh, don't you love the, the kids that tell mom and dad? And, and uh, uh, you know, can't I stay out till midnight tonight? No, you can't stay out till midnight tonight. You've got to be home at nine. You just don't trust me. Well, I trust you. I just don't trust the devil. And you mean the devil that's in you. But anyway, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the devil. And, uh, and then kids mess up and they say, well, I'm just a kid. Well, I, I thought you you said I could trust you. Uh, well, yeah, but I'm just a kid. And, uh, you know, as Christians. Galatians 5, 1, the Bible says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What's that bondage that's the law uh, they were wanting to get the christians to act like judaizers uh, the jewish there's no we're, we're christians now 
uh, we're saved. We, we, we live by the New Testament. We practice those things in the New Testament. He says, stand fast, therefore, in liberty, where Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And just jump down uh, with time, verse number 13. For brethren, you have not been called, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. God has set us free. Goes on, he says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love. Serve one another, make me a blessing. That should be the desire that we have in our. Lives as believers, Lord, make me a blessing. Use not liberty, you know, you, you now have the liberty to, but you also have the liberty not to. You have the liberty to, but the liberty not to. And uh, some other other passage you can write down. Romans six seventeen through 23 says, remember what you had when you were lost. You were under bondage. You were a servant of sin. But now you've been set free from that. Now live under righteousness. Uh, before we couldn't. All your righteousness is filthy rags in his sight. Uh, but now that you're saved. Now you can be a servant of God. Now you can enjoy the joys and blessings that come. From walking right and doing right and making good choices. Just re- this, this uh, statement said Christians Christianity understands it. Uh, once extremely elastic and extremely rigid. Uh, speaking of religion. Uh, it is elastic in that it includes a large measure of liberty for the creature. It is rigid and that it includes the proviso that however created beings choose to behave, they may accept responsibility of their own actions and endure the consequences. Uh, we can't say anymore the devil made me do it or sin made me do it, can we? It removes our excuse. Uh, we understand with liberty comes responsibility. Uh, now we have to bear the consequences is our choice. It's our decision. Can't blame mom and dad anymore. When we grow up and get out of the house, we have to live with our own mistakes, don't we? And uh, uh, decisions and things we make. Well, as Christians, we come before God. Peter Marshall. He said this before the U.S. Senate. Uh, don't you love the good old days? Well, some things. Uh, this is what he said before the U.S. Senate. Lord Jesus, thou who art the way, the truth, and the life, hear us as we pray for the truth that shall make all free. Teach us that liberty is not only to be loved, but also to be lived. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried in books. It costs too much to be hoarded. Help us to see that our liberty is not the right to do as we please, but the opportunity to please to do what is right. And uh, now that we have this liberty, what are you going to do with it? Are you saved? Do you know what true liberty is? Be set free from your sins, the condemnation that comes with them, the eternal life of torment in hell, to be able to have a glorious home in heaven. Your sins forgiven, condemnation removed. Are you saved? If you're still in bondage to sin, may you get saved today. But as a Christian, we've been set free. We have liberty. So what are your dreams? Filthy dreams? Filthy dreamers. Been set free, and what do they do with it? They go out and sow sin. We've been set free. You can do what you want now. What are you going to do? Turn in the grace of God into lasciviousness. We get to now to serve, serve God and we get to now not defile the flesh. Have a good testimony that would honor him. Get to see what God might do in our lives. Let's stand as we have the invitation this morning. These filthy dreamers. What do they do? They defile the flesh. 
that flesh that Jesus has washed and cleaned and he's taken us out of that horrible mucky pit that mud keeps you sucked down he's set our feet upon a rock and he's put a new song in our heart why do we ever want to get off that, that rock back down in that mud again you've been set free why would you want to be stuck in it again back in that place Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this morning. I pray for the invitation. And Lord, if there's one person here today not saved, I, uh, may they make that eternal choice. Uh, Lord, uh, may they choose to be saved. That they would come and seek that liberty that comes through your son, Jesus Christ. Grace, that gift of eternal life. Uh, I pray, Lord, for those who have received that gift, who have liberty. What are we going to do with that liberty? Are we filthy dreamers? As we get that liberty, as we get set free, what are we going to use it for? How are we going to live our lives? Uh, Lord, I pray that you would uh, just do a work in our hearts. And Lord, this week we would desire to bring glory to your name and to honor you through our life and living. Bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.